So this question starts off by giving us this equation here, 2x squared minus 4x equal t equals t. I want to just rewrite that over here. Then the question goes on to say, in the equation above, t is a constant. If the equation has no real solutions, which of the following could be a value of t? So a couple of things are important. t is a constant, not a variable. And we know that the equation has no real solutions. So, you know, if t were a number, what I would do here is move the t to the left and just make this 2x squared minus 4x minus t equals 0. Right? That way I'd have a trinomial and I can do some factoring. I may even be able to use quadratic um, formula to solve for x. So this is just a format that hopefully you're used to seeing these types of things in when you have a quadratic equation. Now, the second part here that's important is the equation has no real solution. So what does that mean? That means that you want uh, t to be a value such that by plugging t in, which is what we're going to lead to, right, because these are all potentially t values, you don't get a solution, right? There's no real solutions, which means there are, right, so no real solutions equals imaginary solutions. Okay, so it's kind of like code for, if you don't have real solutions, then the solutions that you get will be imaginary. So then hopefully this also rings a bell, right? But how do, how do I get an imaginary solution from a quadratic equation? Well, the easiest way to figure that out, in my opinion, is through the quadratic formula, right? So if you remember x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, the part of this formula that's important for us right now is this part here that's under the square root. Because if that b squared minus 4ac, if that is less than 0, right? Or another way to say it is if that is negative, then we will end up with the square root, right? So if I just pop that out, I'd end up with a square root of a negative number, and that would lead me to an imaginary solution. That will lead me to an imaginary number. So now things are starting to hopefully get a little bit clearer because if this is the main focus and this is where I'm starting and I have values to plug in for T, I can actually just say that, hey, when I try answer choice A, for instance, it's saying that T is equal to negative 3. That would mean that my equation was 2X squared minus 4X plus 3, right, because minus T so minus time negative 3 is plus 3, equals 0. And that would mean that my A value is 2, and my B value is negative 4, and my C value is positive 3. And I can just test this out and say, well, is it true that negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2, right? So uh, the A value times C or times 3, is it true that that is less than 0? And we can test that. Right, so I'd have a 16 here, because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And then I'd have a minus 24 here, right, because 4 times 2 is 8. 8, 8 times 3 is 24. There's a minus sign, so minus 24. So this ends up being negative 8, which is, in fact, less than 0. Okay, so that's going to immediately make me think that A is the correct answer, and I'm pretty sure I'm right about it. But let's just try B just in case, just to make sure. So I'll go, you know, I'll go up here because I have some space. So with B, B is saying that T is equal to negative 1. So if we try that, we'd say, well, that means that 2X squared minus 4X plus 1 equals 0. Again, A is 2, B is negative 4, and C is 1. So now my B squared, again, is negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1. And again, I have 16. But now this just becomes 16 minus 8, which is right not less than 0. Okay, And then we can kind of figure out that the rest of these values here are larger than b, and they're positive, which means that um, they're going to definitely not be less than 0. And you can try those out if you wanted and if you had time. 
but that, the correct answer here is A. So this question, not extremely simple, but it is based upon simple ideas. And it's, you know, starting with the will, with the willingness to move this T over. And maybe you would have plugged in, you could have like plugged in answers here first, right? And then, or even here. And then once you saw, once you visually see this as a negative three, for instance, maybe that would trigger you to then pull it over to the left side, right? So that's, that's one important part. This is another important thing to recall. Um, this is something else important to recall, right? So again, keep this in mind. This is basically, this is typically what you'll see on this test on how to find imaginary solutions, which again is encoded in this question as no real solutions. It didn't say no solutions. It said no real solutions.